Seinfeld Cup, round number six, with white pieces, Grandmaster Yanni Pomnici against, with the black pieces, Grandmaster Fabi 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 Caruana. My name is Nitzan Steinberg, I'm Grandmaster, and today we will analyze this fantastic game. So come on, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back. So yesterday, round number six finished with incredible game to analyze. So let's do it together. Against Yanni Pomnici with the white pieces against Fabiano Caruana with the black pieces. So let's see. So E4 was the option that Jan chose against Fabi. C5, knight F3, and now Fabi, I think, maybe, you know, surprised Jan with G6. He didn't play the move d6, as we already learned about d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, of course, attacking the pawn, knight c3, and now a6, this is the knight of variation, knight c6 here is the rouser, and g6 is the dragon, right? So, no, Fabiano is playing the move g6. So, it's really, really interesting because, you know, it's a dragon variation, uh, but let's learn a little bit some openings here so i recommend here for white to play the move c3 this is very interesting move that you know is very common uh, in the last games uh, you know in the highest rating um, in the world it's very interesting because for example bishop g7 d4 and you're controlling the center uh, you can take take d5 e5 uh, it's it's nice position to play because bishop b5 knight c3 and this bishop is not so good. I, I think the best option for black here is to play the move d5 and after e5 to play a6, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, the point is that it's just to avoid from bishop b5 and you you want to play the move knight c6, bishop g7, knight h6, knight f5, castle, and it's interesting position for both sides. But after g6, of course, the main move here is to play d4. c takes d4, knight takes d4, and after bishop g7, uh, the main uh, theory here is to play the move c4 with Marot's variation. Here, for example, knight c6, bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3. Uh, you can choose here to play knight g4, for example, after queen takes, knight takes d4, queen d1, knight e6. I had a very interesting game here with the white pieces that I won in Perdubice, I think maybe eight years ago. Um, it's interesting line. Of course, after c4, there are many lines for black. For example, knight c6, bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3, and not to play knight g4. You can play also d6. Now bishop e2, castle, castle. So it's really nice, you know, a lot of theory to learn. You can do it uh, by your own. It's very nice and also improving your skills in the theory. So knight c3 was played by uh, Yanni Pomnici. For me, it's a little bit surprising because here it's a dragon without to play d6. Let's see what happens. So knight c6, bishop e3, and now knight to f6. You probably think why white cannot take uh, the knight from c6 and after b takes just to play e5. So the point here is the knight going back to g8. The point is now that you, we are threatening the pawn in e5 and after f4, Black has a very beautiful uh, move, knight to h6, with a point to play castle, of course, knight f5, rook b8, d6, bishop e6, or queen a5 with bishop a6, so it's really nice position to play with the black pieces. So after, um, yeah, after knight f6, white played the move bishop to c4. The point is that black uh, wanted to play the move d5, maybe after castling, uh, so bishop c4 just avoiding from d5. And now castle, bishop b3, and here Fabiano is playing the move d6 and right uh, coming back to uh, the dragon variation. And as you can see here, white just must think by himself what is the threat, right? After each move, we must think what is my opponent's threat. So knight g4, this is the threat, of course. For example, after castle, just knight g4, knight xc6, b takes c6. And here is just a brilliant position for, for black. After bishop d4, just e5. And this bishop is just really bad here. Bishop e3, the only move. Just taking. And two bishops for black is just amazing here. Uh, so, for example, bishop g5. But now also a5, bishop a6, knight e5, knight c4, rook b8. 
really great position, I think Blatter, uh, Black is just better here. So, of course, after d6, Yanni Pomlishi understand more than ever, uh, of course, is one of the best players in the world, he's playing the move f3. Uh, so, queen a5 was played by Fabiano, um, as you can see in the dragon variation, Black will try to attack in the queen side, while White will attack in the king side. How he will do it? White will uh, try to play h4, to push h4, g4, h5, and uh, to open this h file. Uh, and black will try to play something around bishop d7, knight e5, b5, b4, rook fc8, and trying to play in, in the queen side. While uh, this position will be with, uh, you know, like long castle for white and small castle, um, short castle, of course, for black. So after queen a5 was played, an interesting move, queen to d3. And I must admit that for me it's a little bit surprising because queen d2 should be the move, right? Uh, but after queen d3, black played the move knight to e5 with the threat for the queen and queen d2 was played now and just black playing the move bishop to d7. So it seems like uh, crown just, you know, has a tempo up in the dragon. I'm not sure why he did it, uh, Jan Nipomnishi, but uh, this was in the game. So, long castle and now rook fc8. And as you can see, black is just controlling everything and uh, playing very fast to attack, right? And white didn't play the move h4 or g4 yet. So, he don't have so much time to play, right? For example, uh, after king b1, uh, we will see it afterwards. But for example, g4, I think just b5. And black is, you know, just attack very, very fast. h4, for example... I can, I can show you b4, knight c e2 and maybe d5 already, knight c4. It seems like black is, is attacking very, very fast and uh, much more faster than white. So king b1 was played uh, from Jan Nipomnishi and now knight c4. Uh, white just took it, rook takes c4. Uh, maybe you will ask why to took it. So, for example, here uh, you must understand that this bishop is the best bishop in the game, right? And if white... Um, will you know will give the black this bishop from e3 this bishop on g7 will just be uh, you know like winning for for black his is will be incredible and no one can handle him right so uh, for white of course if he can choose which uh, bishop to uh, to to exchange with this knight of course, it will be this bishop from b3. So, bishop takes c4, of course, and rook takes c4, and now g4 was played, and, and black is just playing the move bishop to e6. I think already here, maybe uh, starting to be interesting, because maybe some of the options here to take here with queen a2, or maybe knight e4, maybe rook a c8, maybe b5. So, as you can see, there are very um, large options for black here to attack in the queen side. So knight b3 was played. I think probably after h4 it's uh, important to understand. For, I think rook c3, What this was the point uh, um, beside, you know, uh, the bishop e6 move. Of course, b takes c3 is just losing uh, with checkmate on, on a spot, right? Uh, after knight takes c6, this is something that you, you may maybe ask, but knight takes c4, very beautiful move. Just attacking the queen after f takes c4, just f takes c6. And after b takes c3, just bishop takes d c3 with, uh, I don't know, queen b4, queen b5. Uh, it's a checkmate, right? So why just I need to bring the queen and black is just winning. So... This was the point, after h4 just rook takes c3, I think queen takes c3 must be the move, but queen a2, I don't know, king c1, rook c8, should be at least really fun uh, to play with the black pieces here. So, Yanni Pomnishi, after bishop e6, played the move knight to b3. He said, okay, you know what, I really want uh, to disturb this queen from a5, this is a very strong queen, so just going back, queen a6, and this queen is doing a great job in this a file. Bishop d4, rook a c8, uh, uh, bringing just the last piece into the game. And now, Yanni Pomnishi played the move g5. And this was a blunder. No way, ladies and gentlemen. You can stop the video now and think by yourself how black can punish white for this move g5. I, I can tell you that overall it's very logical to play this move because as we already understand, this bishop on g7 is the main 
piece for black and if white can manage to exchange it it will be fantastic for him right so Yanni Pomnichi is thinking only for exchanging these two bishops right this bishop and this bishop so maybe he thought about knight h5 bishop takes g7 knight takes maybe queen e3 rook d4 something around this but no after g5 it's a brilliant move for black knight takes e4 and knight sacrifice what do you think about this position so the point is after knight takes c4 just rook takes d4 another brilliant move and the point here is after knight takes d4, just queen a2 check, king c1 and queen a1 checkmate on the board. So after knight takes e4, the only move to play here is f takes e4. And now bishop takes d4. So this was in the game knight takes d4 and now rook takes c3. Here of course after b c, queen a2, king c1, just queen a1 checkmate. And after knight takes e6, just rook takes e2. Uh, with the double threat also in the queen also the pawn uh, the knight on e6 so now black has two pawns up for example queen takes c2 just rook takes c2 king c2 and i don't know queen c6 check i will take this knight and probably should be winning for black really easy so after knight takes d4 rook takes c3 and now uh, jan nipomnishi is playing a3 and you know jan nipomnishi is losing here with the white pieces in only 21 moves in the Seinfeld Cup unbelievable let's see together how it finished so Queen c4 another brilliant move the point here that after Queen takes c3 just Queen a2 check King c1 and Rook takes c3 B takes c3 Queen takes a3 check King d2 I think just Bishop c4 with Queen c5 and yeah it totally over here two pawns Queen uh, for two rooks, just game over very soon. So after queen c4 was played b3, queen to c5, going back, everything is fine, black is controlling everything, and this pawn on a3 is a weak pawn, the king is not feeling well, as you can see, the rook on h1 is doing nothing, and black is just winning. Rook c1 was played, queen takes a3, um, h4, and now just rook, Eight to c5 with the idea of rook a5 with queen a2 checkmate so rook cf1 was played and now bishop takes b3 the last brilliant move i will show you of course what was the point behind this move probably after knight takes b3 just rook takes b3 c takes queen takes of course after queen a king a1 i think just queen a4 check for example queen a2 queen d4 check uh, king b1 just rook I don't know rook b5 should be should be over here somehow i don't know how but let's see let's learn let's learn i think also rook c4 what about this one rook c4 with rook a4 that's it right because black has so many pawns right three pawns for white against seven pawns for black so yeah four pawns up and queen against two rooks just amazing J just amazing and of course winning absolutely queen a2 rook a4 take take also this pawn will fall so we just game over and uh, knight takes b3 yeah we understand it great so after c takes b3 uh, the same thing rook takes knight takes queen takes and after king a1 rook c4 and if he's playing the move here queen b2 just queen d3 check king a1 just rook a5 and that's it of course queen a2 queen c3 maybe yes we have checkmate on the board of course yeah so yeah after bishop takes b3 yanni pomishi understood that it was not his day and resigned the game so ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you like this video and you learned something about openings also, about the dragon opening and how can you win with the black pieces against a very strong player like Yanni Pomnichi. So congratulations for Fabi Caruana and uh, let's see how this tournament will end. Thank you very much. See you soon. Don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe my channel for more chess content. See you soon. Bye bye.